Hey, how y'all doing? What? What's that? Huh? I got something on my face. But... Okay. <laughs> okay. Is it gone? Yeah? Okay. Free and Robbie and Robbie and Bree. Drinking J. Cole can kiss my ass. Okay, the diss track, did you send that to Fantano? I want Fantano talking about that by the end of business. My subscriber numbers have not been great as of late, so I need to get in this feud and... Oh! Fucking... <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> we were actually having a major technical difficulty! What? Okay, one more rebroadcast item here. People have been sending me, what the hell is this goddamn stupid thing? What does it say? Grimes freaking out at her... Pendejo! DG, DG set. Fucking... <laughs> sorry! Oh man, I feel sorry for Grimes, but that's gotta be a drop, right? Oh, people want to give Grimes a hard time. Because she was going like this. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man. Hey, look, man. Hey. Look. Look, man. All right, look. If you think we're going to sit here and make fun of Grimes, you're right. No, you're wrong. I watched a bunch of this goddamn, what is it? This music festival. You know, I watched did the Doja Cat thing. I watched Gwen Stefani going like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even Busta Rhymes. Busta Rhymes 51 years old. How old is the flip? <laughs> How old is the flip mode squad? Nobody knows. But yeah, you watch these performances, they're all flawless, you know. They're huge productions, like the Doja Cat thing, massive, you know, giant. You know, they're all kind of perfect. But Grimes' thing was the most relatable, by far. She's just up there. <laughs> you know, that's kind of what I do all day. You know, some USB connection keeps beeping, keeps connecting and disconnecting for no reason. You know, I'm just like, you dumbass dumb piece of shit. You stupid son of a you know, just all day with this. I mean, if this was a performance art thing from Grimes, she's a genius. Busta Rhymes, 51 years old, up there, absolutely nailing. Put your hands where my dad can see. Put your hands where... <laughs> Put your hands where my dad can see. Yes, and liberal in a left-wing country. Huh? What's that guy saying? In a left-wing country, so people should have actually that. hated me. And the error was so great that they made me Spanish. president. <laughs> We'll get to more on this in just one moment. First, let's be real. There are some people who pretend that cauliflower crust pizza is like actual pizza. It is not. That's nonsense. I'm not going to eat that. Okay. So then. Okay, then you go to bed hungry. Today, we're honored to host a figure who has not only captivated the attention of his nation, but has stirred conversations around the globe about the direction of Western civilization, uh, economic down, freedom, man. and the power of individualism. God bless you. A figure whose meteoric rise in politics is matched only by his unyielding dedication to poor conservative principles. Okay. Today. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Oh, hell yeah, dude. What is this? How many views on this? 122K. 122K views. For one day. <laughs> Oh man, this is a cool interview that this guy got. What's the guy's name? Ben Chapenio. Ben. Pendejo. He got an interview with the new president of Argentina, Javier, his name is. He picked a good time, you know, to show uh, what an awesome job <laughs> this guy's doing. What does it say here? Malay's austerity is devastating Argentina. Oh no. Wait, in a good way? <laughs> Shock therapy is pushing more people into poverty. Oh no. That does not sound good, actually. Days after taking office, Malay devalued the Argentine peso by more than 50%. Oh, Christ. And already sky-high inflation rates ascended even further. Oh, Jesus. Since then, the cost of gas in Argentina has roughly doubled. Food prices have risen by roughly 50%. Inflation rate, blah, blah, blah. It's not good. It's not good. As the price hikes intensified, Malay slashed subsidies for services ranging from transportation to utilities. Okay, you might be thinking, why did he have this guy on to show, hey, look. Look what a good job I'm doing. It's stop. Some people are doing good in Argentina. What does this headline say? Malay gives himself salary raise. Backtracks. Backtracks after social media clashes. President Javier has rescinded a 48% raise for himself in his cabinet following a backlash over the increase and his claim that it was automatic despite signing, uh, despite signing crap to give himself the raise. And then what, he tried to blame it on somebody else? Yeah, so a cool guest here. 
that this guy, what's the guy's name? What's the guy's of the sh- of his, his, his show name? Seems like a pretty cool guest. Argentina is, uh, you know, in an economic disaster here. But maybe this guy can turn it around. He's an anarcho-capitalist who was in a Rolling Stones cover band. And he has garage rock hair. Oh, and he seems to have given himself a 48% raise. Despite being a, what is it? Anarcho-capitalist who hates the government. Could be good. Could, could work out. Seems... Seems interesting. It was a Rolling Stones tribute band. <laughs> and basically, we used to cover Rolling Stones songs. Okay. Hey, ben, you want to hit him with a, what's your favorite? That- hey, shut up, man. Ben, you want to hit him with what's your favorite Stones album or something? I mean, that's pretty much... And the Aten people have decided to mature, put on long pants, do things right. Okay. This means that the Argentine people have decided to espouse freedom, and that is the best message. And this is what okay. drives us to keep going, because we know... Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, he's probably a symptom of some bigger problems. <laughs> I would imagine, but uh, he's a really cool guy. He's a really interesting guy. What is an anarcho-capitalist? What does that mean? That means like there's no government. There's just what like private or everybody has their own private army. The government's nothing but a pendejo. Everybody has a private army. Uh, but he gave himself a 48% raise as a public official. And what's this? On the campaign trail, he said that pro-choice Argentines are brainwashed. By a, by a homicidal policy, oh boy. And vowed to launch a referendum to overturn uh, legalized abortion in Argentina. Since the election, his rhetoric has not come down. Okay, that's a funny contradiction. No state. Also, I'm doing all this crap. Also, I want to do all this crap with the state. He's an interesting guy. So, so you got any original pressings of any of those Stones albums? Or Yeah, cool. Alrighty, folks, so today we're going to suffer through some of Bernie Sanders' podcast. Yes, Boom. Bernie Sanders, a ridiculous figure of socialism and uselessness. He now has launched That's a podcast. Him. We can go through that. And nobody cares. Hi. Yeah, okay, here's another clip from this guy. What is he? He's pissed off about this guy, Bernard Saunders. What's the guy's name? <laughs> hey, he's pissed off that this guy has a podcast. Oh, my God. Could you imagine having a podcast? Could you imagine doing that? Going like this? <laughs> All day into a microphone? That's sick. Okay, let's see what this guy's problem is. The reason Medicare for All is a problem is because you end up with socialized medicine. Oh. And with socialized medicine is you are not actually in control of the medicine that you receive. Okay. Plus it cuts down on innovation. Plus it cuts down on supply. Okay. Plus it also prevents people from spending money where they want to spend money oh. to get upscale care, for example. <laughs> And when he compares the life expectancy in Canada to the life expectancy in the United States, the only way to do a comp that is apples to apples Uh is to take demographically similar composites of the population. He's comparing apples to oranges and then to... Why would he do this? Why would he do... Why would he... Why would he do this? It's a baffling choice here. He could have just been like, oh, this guy's old. He's boring. He lives in Vermont or wherever. And then if I heard that, I'd be like, oh, that sounds boring. That sucks. But he goes into this thing about like, oh, you can get upscale care. Upscale care? About what What does this say? About 66.5% of bankruptcies are caused by medical debt in the U.S. 66.5%? <laughs> oh, but you can go to like the W Hotel of hospitals, I guess. So yesterday, O.J. Simpson Never died heard of him. at the age of 76. Oh, okay. And the media didn't quite know what to do with that. They didn't know what to do with that because, of course, O.J. Simpson was a murderer. And everyone knows that he was a murderer, but right. he spent the last okay. half of his life. Yeah, okay, great. So this guy, you know, he was just complaining about this guy, Bernard Saunders. You know, he's got a podcast. He's whining and complaining, droning on on his podcast. And then this guy drones on for 25 minutes about O.J. Simpson. But we know. But there's something more important about O.J. Simpson that we got to talk about. All right. This was like what, like a year and a half ago, two years ago. I found out that David Pac. <laughs> I found out that Arun Brown, David Pacman had a, a cameo thing. You know where you can pay people to say stuff, where you can give people money and then they're legally obligated. They're they're locked into a legal contract where they must say whatever you dictate. 
they say. You know, and I was thinking, like, what's the worst thing? What's something terrible I could get David Pakman to say? And what me and the perverts who watch this program came up with was to have David Pakman say, OJ did nothing wrong, do it again, OJ. <laughs> That's what we came up with. And I got a message back from Cameo that said, this creator has declined your request. In the O.J. Simpson trial, it became very clear to a lot of Americans right. that the standard of equal justice for all, it was not only a matter of could that be reached. Okay. It was a matter of did everyone want that standard to be reached? <laughs> that's what the O.J. Simpson trial meant for a lot of people. And that's what he will be uh -huh. remembered for as a double murderer who got away with it for racial political reasons. Yeah, the money and the fame probably had something to do with it, right, stupid? And if you weren't alive for the O.J. Simpson trial, hey. if you were born afterward or if you don't remember it very well, okay. it was one of the signal events in truly American history. Exactly. Like there are very few places in your memory that you can remember where you were when the thing happened. For I people who are older hey, than I, I don't Pearl Harbor or the moon landing. Okay. For people of my age, the two events that come to mind where you knew where you were when it happened. Yeah. Were the O.J. Simpson verdict and 9-11. Oh. Those were the two events where you, you really know where you, I was in a classroom. Yeah, right. In Los Angeles. No, I don't remember the verdict. I'm about the same age as this guy. No, I don't remember the verdict. What everyone our, our age remembers about this is the media squeezing content out of it. What the hell is this? The dancing Edos. This was my, this is the, this is the one thing I remember. The dancing Etos. <laughs> Okay, then he goes into the glove stuff. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, OJ, put Wait, now he's going to pretend that he can't get the glove on. Hey, Ben. Cause oh, it's so hard for him. Hey! It's so hard for him to get the glove on. Okay, whatever. Pretty stupid. But he does play, you know, the, the most famous line from this trial. So, uh, you know, uh, let's check it out. Johnny Cochran. Never heard of Argument. Him. Here was Johnny Cochran. Okay. Doing some good old-time lawyering here. Uh, no, I'll take your word for it. Let me show you something. This is a knit cap. What, Johnny? I put this knit cap on. And you've been seeing me for a year. If I put this knit cap on, who am I? I never heard of you. I'm still Johnny Cochran with a knit cap. Right. And if you look at O.J. Simpson over there, and he has a rather large head. Okay, that part I don't remember. You can see. You can see this guy in the back. He kind of laughs at that. People are like, where are you going with this, Johnny? He has a rather large head. That might need to be a drop. Okay. O.J. Simpson Who? in a knit cap okay. from two blocks away is still O.J. Simpson. All right. It's no disguise. It's no disguise. It makes no sense. It doesn't fit. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. This was the argument. And it was a stupid argument at the time. Hey. But it was turned into a supposedly interesting argument. Okay, I'm going to say something kind of controversial, but I do that because... I'm not held down by the mainstream. But I'm just going to say it. O.J. Simpson, not a good person. A bad, I think bad. Uh, but uh, this is what this guy misses. He goes on for like 30 minutes about this, and he misses he misses this. I mean, there's been multiple documentaries about O.J. Simpson. What is his name? In a recording that plays during this section of uh, some documentary, an interviewer asks Simpson... If he ever thought what would happen under the same circumstances if he was just a middle-class guy instead of a rich ex-NFL star, I would have no chance. Simpson, what is the guy's name? O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson. As it turns out, Simpson was still allowed to be generating memorabilia during his trial, which allowed him to afford the dream team. If the autograph don't fit, then... I'm out in Miami, ho. Stop. Come on. I think public schooling has been a scam literally the entire time. Absolutely. I don't think That's there was just, ever yeah. a period in which public schooling was good. Hey, John Dewey. Hey, John hey, please. Am I allowed to talk or no? I said, I said they could just watch the Tim cast. God damn you. I don't think That's there was ever a period in which public schooling was good. Back to like enough. John Dewey, when John Dewey started the public school yeah, system. Yeah, the Dewey Decimal to make system. People what, good man? little... Uh, factory workers, exactly. wait for the bell. Don't speak until you're called upon. If the beanie don't fit, then... Rachel Dolezal has an OnlyFans. Yeah, I don't know. We're here. So why not uh, check in with my other favorite news anchor? 
one Donald of the best Trump. arguments um there was we had this bill in florida that they wanted to ban social media for 15 and 14 year olds right and um i had a dad come forward and one of the best arguments i heard dad. against doing that was his son had a business and he said, my son advertises using social media. This is part of, oh, you know, wow. I, I encourage capitalism in my What's home. What's he doing, crypto scams? He's like, I really don't want the government to tell me that he can't do that because oh. it's healthy for him at the age of 15. Okay. That was really interesting. That is interesting. I fully agree with that. I cannot stand these people trying to ban the internet for kids. Oh, ban why? Yeah. Like, per, no, police should. your children. Oh, you it's not the government's it's job. A, yeah, it's a parenting issue. Yeah. I think, it, I think right now companies are incentivized to have children what? on at an early age. Uh, you think like kids should be allowed to go to porn stores? No, of course not. Then why should they be allowed on the internet? <laughs> you want to ban kids from the internet yes. completely? Yep, 100%. Okay. Yeah, cool. Hell yeah, dude. And this is sort of like a, with President Javier, you know, from Argentina. The libertarian stuff seems pretty flexible, you know? Get the government out of my life. Except for my stupid ideas. Except for my stupid ideas that don't work, then the government needs to step in. Uh, but I do like that, you know, uh, this guy, he doesn't have any kids. He's a childless hatman, but uh, but he knows better, you know. <laughs> he knows. Those of, those of us who do have kids, he knows better. You know, I had to tell my kid, Little Jim. That's my kid's name, Little Jim. That's the name of my little rat of a kid. You know, I told him, sorry, you can't go on the internet. You can't set up a social media account uh, because this guy who wears a hat says you can't. What's that? Yeah, he's a libertarian. Huh? That doesn't make sense? Oh, well, you know what else doesn't make sense? Go to your room. Then little Jim goes to his room and he goes like this. <laughs> okay, this is kind of fun. They watched the uh, Civil War movie. Oh, okay, wow. The A24 Civil War movie. I thought of a joke. If I really didn't like that movie, I would go, what did A24 year old write this? <laughs> Got your ass woo. Can you play that drop? No, the got your ass woo. Got gotcha your ass woo! What I really appreciate is how they captured the malice and depravity of journalists. It yes. was it was absolutely. And <laughs> I, 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 I'm not being I'm not being cute. Yes. When the journalists are smiling and laughing at the bloodshed and the gunshots and the gore. Sick. And one of the main characters is like, I have such a hard on for this. I'm like, <laughs> this is what they do. This is what I witness when yes. I'm on the ground being like, this is this is horrifying. People right, are, are being right. He, he, he kind of got this one right, actually. This is what that movie's about. You know, whatever. Not my favorite movie ever. But but he's right on this. That is what it's about. But could you imagine? Could you imagine some Pendejo. out there riling up and exploiting the idea of a civil war in a country? That's sick. That would be sick, right? Huh? Some media pervert doing this. Off of a civil, the idea of a civil war. Okay, this is kind of funny. This, who's, the, what's this lady's name? Carrie Lake. She got caught kind of like flip-flopping on this abortion thing. She was like, oh, I like it. You know, then there was a Supreme Court thing in Arizona where they were like, okay, no abortion. It's banned. You know, people were like, oh, that's not good. And now she's like, oh, no, actually, I don't like that. <laughs> so let's see, let's see Tim get into this. Here we go. Miss Lake's retreat from the fervent anti-abortion rhetoric. Right. Her early 2022 campaign reflects the sharp changes in the politics of abortion nearly two years right. since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. OK, right. so. Right. So so no real ethical compass. Just kind of kind of just kind of doing some political tap dancing. Right. OK, so you're going to what defend that or something. And he has a rather large head. As your senator, I will oppose federal funding for ab abortion. Okay. Federal bans on abortion. As your senator, I will fight for baby bonuses. Making adoption more accessible and affordable. Okay. Strengthening the economy so that mothers can afford a baby. Protecting oh. IVF. Okay. So extending the child tax credit. So she's paid a Nordic, family leave. So she's a Nordic Investing in child now. care. Okay. I am not going to D.C. to legislate an issue that has been returned right. to the states. Right. I'm going to D.C. to secure our border, strengthen our families. And I think to be fair. Right. Carrie Lake's okay, let's get to the defense now. Come on. Come on, Johnny Cochran. Let's go. Previous comment may have been like, oh, it's a great law. It's like a passive thing. Right. And she's probably ignorant to the deeper con d deeper uh, 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 meaning of that yeah, law. She made so people mistake. are coming out being like, now Carrie Lake's flip-flopping. And I'm like, eh, whatever, man. Look, <laughs> Carrie Lake is the kind of person who will break it down for you and tell you if her position changed or not. And I'm going to make this assumption of Carrie Lake because I got to be honest, uh, had uh -huh. her on the show several times. And I've talked to a lot of pot politicians. There are very few who actually will just outright address a question instantly like okay now, i have no idea what you're talking about but and he has a rather large head the reality is uh-huh 
regular people in this country don't care about killing babies. <laughs> I know that they're, all the Democrats are going to go, how dare you, Tim? They're not babies. They're fetuses. They're babies. Shut up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. And then people go, aha, this proves Tim doesn't care about killing babies, dude. Your moral arguments okay. don't work on my, on me if I've asserted a moral opinion. Yeah. Now, if you want to talk about facts, we can debate facts. Right. Maybe, but maybe start the video over. I would probably start over. If I found myself here, because I think he's just totally lost now. People say, Tim doesn't care about killing babies. Dude, <laughs> whatever, man. <laughs> yeah, just start over. Start the video over. It's a video that's gone viral several times. And he has the rather large A trans large woman head. says men love trans women. Oh. And then goes on to talk about how, you know, this, this trans woman has met a bunch of guys before who ah. just can't get enough. Oh, and it brings okay. up interesting questions uh -huh. and the philosophies around gender ideology in which okay. you have leftists who argue okay. that a straight man could date a trans woman. Oh, okay. Well, I suppose technically you could, but, but the point is, yeah, let's get to that. They're saying, uh, you know, people have responded to this video saying that uh, I know straight guys who date trans women. And I'm like, no, right. Those are gay guys. Oh. And this trans woman talking about how guy. And then I say to them, every single person on this planet is gay. And he has a rather large head. OK, both of those things. Interesting. Guys just can't get enough. It's like, yes, those are gay guys. Oh, and it really okay. is quite simple to break down. Yeah, and I, well, I, I, I would say don't worry about it. You know, you live in the middle of nowhere and don't interact with anybody. So don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, people out there in the world who have uh, zero interest in interacting with you ever and who they're attracted to. Yeah, don't worry about it. You're, you'll be fine out in the woods goofing around and recording your videos. <laughs> well, there we go, guys. A little check in with some of our favorite characters, newsmen, Grimes. Johnny Cochran, O.J. Simpson. But guys, it's... It's Monday, and that got us... Twitching and twisting. Monday really... Got wet. your ass! Woo! But I uh, hope y'all are doing good. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. I like to walk out here and I'm gonna take about a week off. Guys! You're not getting the whole show, okay? Please, for Christ's sake, become a member on Patreon, okay? For as little as two bones. When you join on Patreon for as little as two stupid little bones, you get the Tuesday, Thursday shows every week. The comments program where you can ask questions or tell stories or do whatever and it, it's a whole show. Behind the scenes crap. All for a two future little bones, that's it. Just click this link, here it is, right there, see it? Yep, okay. I'm in hell. And if you really want to support the wretched show, people call it because they're satanic, they're sick, you could become a producer for only 25 bones. These beautiful people here are, they, they God. God. Without this producers, it's over, man. It's, it's done. Do you think we can do the show without the producers? Okay, because if you do think that, you got another thing coming, my man. You got a totally different thing coming. Without the producers, it is it is as good as over. Hello? Is anyone listening to me? Please answer. I'll wait. Please answer. Our hearts and our toilets are forever endowed unto the producers from which all light comes. Praise God. Praise God. It really is amazing to have such beautiful producers, and if you want to do it, oh my God. I, you know, I don't, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> you know... I love the producers so much that I wrote a little song about them. Here we go. Hit it. Without the producers, we're going straight to hell. And we'll be there mashing our teeth for all eternity. And then we'll go down to the lower level of hell where you can't get out. Not even for good, good behavior. Slash deeds. Go, go down there. Deeds. Ah,